Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our eternal stride uh, to somehow survive the Royal Rumble campaign where I've modified Legendary Iron Man difficulty uh, to a point where it is potentially unwinnable but we're trying to do the best to just stay in the game. It is uh, months number seven I think. Time to go for the Warlock in his uh, stronghold and between last mission and this one there is quite a two and a half weeks pause from my side so i'm not completely current on how the campaign looks but we're going to play it by ear we got the a team with us the best of the best in this campaign and we're taking also our prime weapons with us this hopefully should be an easier battle we got grell here we got sonar we got dilly g uh, the guy who is writing a phenomenal logbook. Uh, if you have s haven't seen it in the comments, give it a thumbs up. He certainly deserves it. Um, one of the prime soldiers, if not the prime soldier of this campaign. Euler Cannon with his death from above. Then good old Hogbite, savior of uh, worlds. And last but certainly not least, Ras. I brought a double healing with me. Death from above, death from above, death from above. So we've brought all of the death from above characters. To fight against the warlock a couple of mine shields here just to deal with his shenanigans we got a turret that we brought with us some uh, cover removal and other than that really just a mixture of bullets to make it a good mission so we got quite a few enemies on the mission I've forgotten to, to check it exactly but I think it was 20 ish doesn't really matter uh, we need to go through them anyway so um, let's dive into the mission and see how difficult the warlock is going to become and we are landing so it's do or die against the warlock uh, this is definitely going to be one of the more difficult missions overall until the warlock and then uh, the idea is to cur hopefully curb stomp him similar to what we have done uh, with the previous chosen all right as always loading takes a little bit of time interesting to see that we can explode this um kind of typically tells you that there is an alien somewhere close you're typically not allowed to explode these things by just standing next to them. But okay. Fair enough. Okay, so I'm just trying to figure out where we need to go. Potentially this way and then left. Seems like the logical choice to me. Euler moves up. Hawkbite moves up. Grell takes a position over here. Russ takes a position right here. Dilly, my man G, is moving over here. No need to ask twice. Sona moves all the way over here. Still not fully understanding why we can explode the canister because. Typically, your own soldier do not trigger the proximity for explosions, and there isn't any hidden unit here. So that's very strange that we can explode it. Hearing some stomping. It's never a really good sign, is it? Good. Well... Let's give it a peek and see how things are in here. So this door is open, which immediately tells me that there is a potential pack around around this corner. And this here has potentially triggered them, right? Advent Military Assault Mac. Holy moly, that looks great. Next pack is right there, so gotta be careful. Ooh. Look at these guys. Fantastic modeling, I must say. 
really, 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 really well done. That model is great. 40 hit points, 4 armor. Deals moderate damage, but looks like it has some sort of a mini gun up there. So, that's dangerous by itself. Could move to here. Question is, does that trigger? Does that trigger? Could move to here, which is potentially going to trigger. Could move to here, and then straight to here, which th all of this here is full line of sight blockage, so he would only be able to see through here, but this here is see-through so there is a chance that he could see them this here is theoretically still flanking him this is also flanking him but gotta keep in mind that uh, the um, distance penalty will eventually become larger and larger so what's the right play here Saiken commander Saiken says run and gun and full cover just so that we're not dealing with that other pack okay advent sparks i see how it is all right let's try to get that collector assassin down that's a miss and come on a hit Two fifty fifties, both of them not really successful. I don't like that. Okay, we got the, the dark lands, so that in itself should be fine. Um, could finish the drone. Don't want to do that, of course. Still trying to see whom we can attack. I want to get as close as possible so that we can deal damage with our blue screen rounds. This here is potentially the right move. Dilly G moves up. Okay, and that would be a lot of damage. I like it. I like that a lot. Euler does have salvo so we're good we have another means of just destroying cover potentially not i mean look rocket launcher would be good but wouldn't hit fully how about the plasma gray yeah, that that's optimal we got Salvo, so that would not end our turn. Just trying to find the right balance here. All right, let's start with that. Hate to use consumables, but these guys seem like if they w if we leave them untreated, that'll be a big big problem. Thirty eight hit points. I tell you what, a lightning hands definitely will help here. Solid damage. Just out of curiosity, can't kill these guys, can't kill him yet, but we could theoretically kill the drone. I'm just looking at it, 14 points of damage, 
Yeah, that's an easy auto kill. I am considering using cereal and just going through them. Before we do that, though, let's get a couple of automatic things going, shall we? So this here should not trigger anything. It should set them up. If it triggers, I still have plenty of actions left over. Okay, very good. So that dealt some damage, but didn't expose us too much. Very good. Now, what I want to do is we're going with cereal and we just want to clean up the field, at least parts of the field, right? Starting with a drone. That Collector Assassin, 9 points of damage. Oh, that's a 100% kill as well. I got, it, right? got some focus out of it, fantastic. Hogbite says thank you. Now we got to deal with that militant mech. That does not trigger serial, by the way, in case you wonder. All right, moving up with Grell. I'm being careful not to pull that other pack that we know is there. Should have blue screen rounds, don't shouldn't we? Yes, we do. All right. Cur interestingly enough, the Advent Spark is not an auto kill. Okay, just trying to be mindful here with our action economy. Again, careful not to pull anything else. Getting the spark down. And apparently the game didn't like that. Let me restart it and pick up from here. Wow, first pack and it already starts breaking down. Okay, back. I played it exactly the way that I played it before. I forgot to hit the record button for cannons shot. I used rupture to make sure that we crit on the shield bearer. Shield bearer immediately died and that's pretty much it. We got a couple of implacables and a hair trigger now uh, on cannon so i'll be careful and not use the implacables but uh, since the hair trigger um, actually happened fair and square i am wondering to which degree the other pack will just move in and if this here is a good idea so let's span up a kill zone Forgot to actually move Hogboy to here. Should have done that. It's the only one who hasn't attacked. Okay. But the rest was exactly as before. And we're ending the turn. Good. I still hate those bugs. That is really, really unfortunate that they keep happening. Those uh, immediate crashes. And as I was figuring, Yellow Alert wouldn't let us be alone. Thankfully, we prepared by putting a kill zone up. And boy, the game is unstable. I don't know what it is today. If it is just a cold uh, PC that just needs to start, or if the game itself is somewhat un uh, unstable. Oh, that is really, really, really annoying. Second fail to load just in seconds. Okay, let me try it one more time and I hope this time it works. 
All right, back again with yet another attempt. Hopefully this time it is going to be more stable. I do have the daunting feeling that the Warlock actually tries to hinder us from winning this by malfunctioning my PC via his Psy powers or malfunctioning the game state. He knows very well that that's the only way how he can win. On a more serious note, I installed a mod that deals with Overwatch issues. We had that in our Rise of the Robots campaign. It's called Less Overwatch Lockups. And essentially what it does, it rewires the Overwatch um, yeah, order. And I can only imagine that Killzone might have had that problem because typically uh, those things uh, happen only when the overwatch routine is broken so we have the exact same um, game state and the exact same thing should happen hopefully this time without breaking uh, not sure why she was taking an overwatch shot but okay other than that same game state very good. Euler's death uh, kill zone definitely pays dividends here. Oh, look at you. Coming in all buffed up, ready to rumble. Well, <laughs> no Overwatch and a Blade Storm teaches you uh, to not do that again. Okay, apparently that has fixed the problem. But the game is not happy with what just happened. So, naturally, it adds another pack to the equation. We're fighting 10 enemies again. 15. Okay, well, so far everything seems more stable. Elite Naga gets a nice little hit as well. Oh boy, our look! Wow, our kill zone plus the over uh, plus the blade storm. That just completely wrecked them. Holy crow! Okay, wow, good. Well, so we're fighting the three packs in one go, right? So. This guy here is poisoned, might die, may, might not die. We got a trooper, we got uh, two frontliners, we got another assault trooper, a python on top of it, and a lead bio viper. Okay, well, I can already tell you this is going to be great, great fun. Sonar has implacable and blade master, but need continue needs to continue to hit and kill in order to get enemies down look i mean this here would be a setup right kill plus the other guy would be set up i think that's a good idea let's go for now that was the one overwatch shot. Good, takes away a lot of the problems here, the high cover and so on. Plus dealt some damage to that elite assassin. Sona moves up. Hundred three percent crit, and we would be looking at potentially a few more points of damage. Will it be enough though to kill him? Potentially not, but close to. Oh yeah, that was good. Fortunately, no hair trigger. Guess I should have saved cereal for this round. We definitely will need to reload. I mean, I hate to use explosives, but 
That would be super efficient. Lots of kills in just one go. I think we're still going to do that. We don't have high ground here and there is an advantage in not taking damage as well. I mean, look at it, right? So that was three kills. Completely taken these guys out. And in terms of Overwatch, um, Grell could take an Overwatch herself. And at the same time, try to kill that heavy mech. That would be a good idea. So the way that she takes an overwatch is with eight protocol, threat assessment will give her an overwatch, also makes her harder to hit. Naturally, want to deal with the heavy mech here. Setting it up for a kill. If Dilly was to move in a bit further, say to here. Could finish one, two. Viper would take some damage. Mutant unfortunately wouldn't take enough damage, so that's a bit of a problem still. Russ could move into full cover. I think this actually is a decent position. A bit close over here so that the Curian could uh, use an AOE attack like a grenade. If we were to position ourselves to here, the Decurion would be out of line of sight. Let's try that. Okay, Dilly is putting his big boy pants on. And here we go. One down, two down. And quite a bit of damage. I like it. I like it. I like it. Hogbite Perry's is going to tank through that. And Russ still has the option to hit here. Not sure if we want to do that. I would rather let Cannon, aka Euler, take another shot for whoever is coming in. So he gave an overwatch over. And we could overwatch ourselves with Guardian. Problem is, is this Assault Trooper could try to hit us in half cover. Hmm. Hmm. Let's rather take full cover, get out of line of sight, and make their life a living hell. Very solid position that we do have. Ah, that was unfortunate. Well, that was really, really bad. Like, that was surprisingly bad. Uh, both the overwatch shot missing, which is rare. But then also the snipe coming in and essentially completely screwing it up. All right, the Hogbite shield has worked out well, so that was good. The snake was a bit of a wild card. Gotta be careful with that elite 
bio viper now because it still can hurt quite a bit uh, dilly moves over there's overwatch here so again i know i repeat myself but we gotta be a bit careful here Good, now the Viper is free to be shot. Um, how about we're moving over here? Twelve points of damage, what are we dealing with? You know what, that's a kill. No need to use chain shot. Very nice. Reason why I moved away is the Bio Vipers tend to exactly explode. We've already figured that out. We learned our lesson the hard way. We learned our lesson the hard way. Um, did we have a means of not getting hit with Overwatch? That would be so fantastic because there is one overwatch going. Hmm. Apparently the answer is no on Hogbite. But then again, it would be only limited damage if the guy would be hitting us okay can live with that can we easily heal it up all right hogbite goes in we'll potentially leave him there Curian is dead. We got Implacable. Don't need that. Um, I would do an Overwatch with Dilly G. And Sonar moves up. Overwatches as well. Overwatch. And we're having a parry here. Bladestorm will definitely do the rest. Do Moving over with Grell. And I begin to understand why these here were explos uh, explodables, because there seem to be still enemies behind here. Crazy, right? That's why they were tagged from the get-go. Alright, fantastic. Well, that was an, a fun first engagement. Let's put it this way. I am expecting that it that we are at least going to have another fun encounter before we get to the warlock. For now, I think we're best advised by simply taking a couple of overwatch shots here, a couple of overwatches in general, and then wait. Cooldowns can come back up. And so far we're doing okay, like the two points of damage, not even mention, uh, worth mentioning. This here uh, is likely the way towards the bay. Trying to get a glimpse on where we need to go. This might also be it. Not sure yet. Okay, in terms of cooldowns and timing, Fanfire is back up. And kill zone is back up as well, so we're actually, relatively speaking, fine. It is clear. Hence, let's move everybody up. Here I come. And now. That's the disadvantage for uh, from like destroying all of the cover. 
when we're now moving into the area, and there is of course less cover left over. Yeah, there is still one pack, I figured. Good, so this room here is not the target room, but the next one is. <laughs> Don't tell me that the game messes up again. We were fine. The patch has worked. Something is the, the mod pack and the chosen strongholds are just not really working well together. All right, let me fix it for the third time. Okay, here we are again. I almost feel like patching the game midways just to get those mods working with uh, the stronghold here. It's a pity that, that uh, this time they uh, seem to have such a problem. Because it was fine beforehand, I mean, yes, we had the odd here and there, kind of 90 mods is a bit much for a mission type of setup, but it never was, like, fundamentally a problem. All right, fantastic. Fantastic. Let us run and gun, get all the way over here. There's the chameleon. Tries to run away. It won't be successful. We're going to get it. Nice little hit. Great. Good. Fantastic. Let's use Hawkbite here. To finish uh, the Chameleon. There's a last pack in that room. And apparently they tricked us into the heavy top. How do they have a heavy turret mounted up there? Holy, holy moly. How's that even? Okay. Well, apparently it's there. We could stand in the open, and that would be the only way of getting rid of the turret. Before we do that, though, let's just move up and try to get rid of uh, these guys. Also, like, what's our chance of Haywire protocoling this? Let's just temporarily disable it. And why exactly am I seeing sleeping Athens in these capsulas? Have they always been there? Yeah, potentially, right? I've just never paid enough atten attention. Imagine that, playing the game for so long and then you have never seen that there are actually Advents in these pods. <laughs> Funny. Good, we're marking this guy in case we're not hitting. Well, that's not the case. Perry here. Moving up, there might be another pack coming in. And in order to be ready for that, Dilly G is on the hunt.
Grass Overwatch is as well, and we're ending the turn. There's one more pack in the last room. Might as well, like, charge around the corner. Beyond says no. Euler moves over. And we're chain shotting that super heavy turret. Easy. Very good. Hogbite moves up. Everybody else moves up as well. I think we need one or two turns just to cool down and get in the right position. Reload. And then it's one more pack. I mean, so far we're doing reasonably well. But of course, they can't wait. They need to charge in two Brutes. Correction. One Brute, after we took care of this guy. Hawkbite continues to move in. Leads the pack here. Good, we know where the portal is at. I think we've also killed most of the enemies. Moving forward. And we're taking an aggressive like three overwatches here. Come get some. Got it covered. I don't think there is anyone left over, right? Loot expired. How much longer must I endure no. sacrilege? That was the last That was the last pack. Which means we can charge in. And besides the very beginning, where we triggered like three packs, three packs of six enemies, we were actually doing reasonably well with, with the rest. Good. In turn, still need to move everybody up and reload. And then pray that the safe game is just keeping stable. I begin to regret for the first time playing Iron Man. Typically, I don't have the fear that a safe is going to be deleted, but this here is like the that's a, this is a level of instability that I haven't witnessed so far. Good. One more round. We're reloading. Uh, the moment that you take the ascension gate. It will automatically reset all of your weapon attachments, meaning autoloaders will just be treated as if you haven't autoloaded at all yet. Which is a big plus, so you might as well want to completely fill up your magazine before going there, because autoloaders will effectively work again. And now the idea is kill the two admins that are near the entrance, get a ghost uh, going as with the Templar. Summon the turret for Dilly G. Get everybody into a good position and then see if we can repeat our one shot massacre or one round massacre of uh, the Warlock. Essentially spawn him, kill him, kill the sarcophagus with just enough brute force and power and then take it from there. Good, we landed. Diddy G with his sunglasses just walks into the into the face frame shot. Get ready, people. You know what's coming next. 
Look, Central, we are absolutely ready. Trust me. There hasn't been an XCOM team that was more ready than us. Take on these enemies. Right, potentially back there somewhere. If you say so. Confirmed. I'm going. Let's do this. Moving to position. Okay, well. I mean we do have time. Overwatch. Easy PC. Yeah, this should trigger them. In case you're wondering, the guys are always uh, over there. Overwatch. Affirmative. Covering on. Overwatch. Moving to Overwatch. Moving to Overwatch. Overwatch. Taking off movement. Good. Hop by. Begins to trigger the Marauder. Blade Storm. Now nah, we need him to summon a ghost, so this here will not trigger the the chosen yet. Still out of reach. Good. I, I guess that'll be okay. Heading to that location. Tired of waiting around. Location confirmed. Good. Time to summon our turret. There we go. It can move next turn as well. Now everybody, first of all, ends their turn. Very good. Now, Hogbite can summon a ghost, which should not trigger. Typically, these guys don't run that far in. Very good. Uh, we're again ending our turn. Give Hopbite his turn back. And whilst we are at it, Soldiers decided. Hopbite just moves a bit closer. In turn, there we go. So, turret. Moves into the open here. Does the trigger? Does not. Interesting. One last end turn. So that the turret has two turns to go. And we are putting Euler All right, I'll go. up here. Still doesn't trigger. Interesting. Daily G over here. Moving out. Let's move already. On your order. Both sides over here. And in turn for now. All right, Hopbite is going to go in. Here we go. And now it's time to fight the Warlock. Will he stand a chance? Will it be a curb stomp? Warlock appears. It is do or die time. Low profile. So we got a... I have problems hitting him. Does not uh, trigger Overwatch. Can summon troopers. 
Revealed Soul units and is nearly immune to critical strikes. That's fine, but close range attacks um, hurt him and he hates Templars. Great. Perfect. Because guess what, my friend? We got some Templars for you. Not only that. Very good. So that's number one. Number two would be chain shot. Are we doing that? Or well, I think we're better off just rupturing him, to be honest. Yep. That's going to deal more damage. Good. Here's the low profile. A trick of his. Twenty-seven points of damage. Holy moly! And we haven't even amplified any of uh, the damage. Well, that sucked uh, to be him. It appears this device functions <laughs> Definitely sucked to be him. Oh my lord! Well, if we can catch them off guard, it just doesn't look very good for him, uh, for them. We're placing, uh, hedging our bets here. If reinforcements are coming from there, uh, that's going to be quite painful. Moving up, and now it's time to kill that sarcophagus. Rapid fire. Nice one, nice one. Flying our turret here. Some extra damage. Next turn is going to be a winner, for sure. I'm wondering why exactly can't we see it from here? Oh, it's that's really unfortunate. Well, okay, moving up. That's one hit, and we're triple uh, triplet hitting. Nice little fanfire. Gets the juices flowing. Here I come. Mind you, we're not even in, in the first round of the sarcophagus, so the thing technically should still be very much standing. But boy, are we just melting through it. So, the enemies haven't spawned yet, and the sarcophagus, I think, at like 10 hit points. Oh, this is going to be good. Uh oh. That could mean a couple of counter attacks. Prime gets an action every time we're attacking him. Ooh, okay, well, that's a bit dangerous here with the Prime. Let's start with reloading and then uh, let's take this guy out.
There we go. Alright, so Hogbite might get that little extra heal here. Not that he really needs it, but you know, just topping him off. And we're not close enough to that other prime, that is unfortunate. Okay, be it as it may. This thing has nine hit points, right? Right. Run gun. Move up. We do have Blade Storm, so it is shotgun to the face, and if he does not die, which he does not, he will get an action, and it's Blade Storm. Inhuman reflexes. Does not help him. Does not help him. He died just like the rest. Moving out. Move in here to help our friend. We do have a turret. Might as well insult the aliens by destroying the thing with their own technology. With the capacitor damaged, the regeneration process has been interrupted. I believe now would be the appropriate time to take them out. Then you know what to do. Take that creature down. All right, Dilly. Ooh, what are we going to do with you, buddy? Hmm. We need some we need some overwatch on that right hand side. Overwatch with Hogbite and moving Grell up here. It's not a perfect position, but good enough for some overwatches. Russ overwatches as well. And our Templar Ghost does nothing for now. Let's see where the guy is spawning. Right next to Hogbite. He's welcome by an a friendly hit from Bladestorm. <laughs> Claims that is it is impossible. I told you he would con uh, he would uh, tell us that we are cheating. Which we are not, by the way. Good. Nice little hit. We're shredding his armor. Oh, the game really messing it up. Guys, I'm so sorry for the performance uh, of the game this time. Let me restart one last time. And hopefully, hopefully we can get through that without the Warlock using his voodoo magic to try to prevent us from hitting him okay so not only did i need to fix it but i also needed to replay the entire state i killed the sarcophagus again and we're ending the turn here's the warlock and hopefully this time not going to completely bug out he does not trigger overwatch shots and he finds it quite impossible that we have bastard him i on the other hand find it quite uh, fitting that euler should get the last laugh and actually kill him that well that will not be enough indeed but this you should do the trick Guys, I am disappointed about, uh, mainly about the performance of the mods in the Warlock hideout. I apologize. I wish I could have recorded it in one take. I'm not a big fan of using console commands to kind of restart missions. I firmly think that wouldn't have fixed the issue here. Uh, we certainly had a problem with overwatches that I could fix, but I have no idea why sometimes the game just crashes when I took normal shots. That 
it just didn't make any sense. Other than that, it was an excellent mission. I mean, we had fun, we went in and we already knew that the hideouts wouldn't be on the same challenge rating as the rest of the campaign. But see it from the following perspective. We have now buddied out the next uh, Chosen out of the Royal Rumble. It's like one of these things in wrestling, if I can use that analogy, where the weaker wrestlers at the beginning will be uh, eventually yeah, thrown out. And uh, this time the Warlock, uh, it was the Warlock's turn to be thrown out. We get a nice little rifle as an upgrade. And finally, this guy is not going to get on our nerves anymore. So that's really the positive aspect of it. It certainly wasn't as difficult, but it could have shown you how if you ever struggle with any of the Chosens, how you can really set up uh, proficiently, prepare them, and then essentially with the right equipment and the right skills, just waltz through them, I suppose. Not much happening here. Uh, the team was very successful. We got the Disruptor Rifle and Marauder Corpse, which is fine. And now I am hoping for a bit more stability in the mod pack. Good. And with that, we will also have way, way better chances of uh, uh, dealing with the Chosen here in the Resistance Ring. Let's just double check the overall status. We're researching Vector Rifles, that's fine. And you can see that we have eliminated all three of the Chosen because the Chosen button is gone. Am I right or am I missing something? Let's just double check here. Nice. Good. And I remember, yeah, now, now I remember we wanted to put a soldier here. Dodge 8, uh, reduce avatar project was good. What else? We had something else that was good. Dodge 9, increase combat intelligence, but that is not for Hogbite, right? No, uh, it's not because Hogbite unfortunately cannot do that. Speed of our weapon research is increased. So that is irrelevant for us as well. Promotion would be nice. I think overall we're going to go with the dodge uh, thing here. And I'm wondering... How many days do we have left over? We still got 10 days, uh, so we don't need to hurry. I just want Hogbite to be back and then we can give him the dodge. No need to rush too much. Good, we could get another Guerrilla Ops to counter a dark event. Why not? That sounds like a fun idea. I'm up for a few more difficult missions now. And let's just double check because now that the Chosens are gone, the next natural thing is getting these other factions away, right? So this here looks fantastic. Dodge 7. Just a lot of rewards. Well, we need to get Hogbite for that. Yeah, we can't find the headquarter of one of them yet. Not this iteration, but next uh, month I'm going to try to do that. Because remember, we still have uh, three factions. And I potentially should also do a, something against the Avatar project. Shouldn't just let that sit, sit there loosey-goosey. What else did I want to do? I think we wanted to make contact here. Let's first of all do that Guerrilla Ops checkup. And I remember that we wanted to train a few more low-level soldiers so that we can get some more cannon fodder. Uh, maybe I need to do something against the Avatar project. Okay, Eric Anderson has recovered from their wounds. That means Hogbite is back, right? 
right? Right. Very good. So now Avatar Project, Dodge plus eight. That hits two birds with one stone. Uh, just double checking the timing here. Expand the queue. Nine days, eight of which he's spending exactly where he should spend them, which is reducing that avatar progress. And Hogbite should should spend some time. In a perfect world, he would do that together with um, Russ. Maybe build up a bond, but Russ is tired for a few days. So for now, whom is he taking? Wilson the second. Very good. Fantastic. That's extra dodge for Hogbite, which he can definitely use. One or two more of these missions and he should almost be at 100 dodge, which would be fantastic. Good, we got a training uh, here. All negative traits removed. Putting another one in. We're taking a lot of negative traits here, guys. And bond training is going on as well. That's good. Still working on those vector rifles. That's not bad either. So we're going to do a little trick here. This guerrilla uh, mission is safe for now. I just want to check that we do have enough people because it will pop up immediately. And what's what's the Mad Bay saying? So Implacable can come uh, immediately out of it. Inappropriate Murphy needs another day. That's fine. But we would have Ranger, Specialists, Specialist Attacks yeah. Okay, Ranger, Specialist, Specialist, Grenadier. Sharpshooters have already leveled up. Hmm. Okay, we could definitely use another Sharpshooter here in that team. We would have... We, we would have uh, Endors up here. What am I missing? So whom would we take? Uh, we would take Endors and Zirkim. Yeah, okay, so Endors would just run with them, although he's already maxed out. But we would have that full team plus... I mean, we could put a skirmisher in i think you guys would appreciate some skirmisher gameplay would you as if you could answer but i assume you would so yeah maybe we'll we'll put them in so one more day until inappropriate murphy is here in order to pass that day eventfully we're just going to wait here uh, getting up here We don't have the intel to buy anything really. Market is open. Let's see. We do have a large inventory, which is why the market takes so long. Yeah, we could sell a war suit, but I'm not interested in doing that. In terms of buying. Nothing really immediately needed. Good, we're flying back. Just passing half a day or so until the tiredness is gone. Ah, and the game was about to trick us, see? We got a guerrilla mission and we got another one in the chamber. So you always got to be careful. Surgical, squad size limit to three. Eh, not sure if that's a great idea. Hidden dark event. Viper rounds, uh, those would suck. Poison on every single shot. Eh.
And what do we have here? Oh, that's really not too bad. We have plenty of alien facilities. I... Wait, what's the hunt? Psionic hunting squads have been spotted. Expect additional forces. That sounds great. Um, but it sounds like a lot of can cancer as well. Might as well just go with new Chile here. Archon Prime, that in itself is already bad. Uh, Mutant Centurion, Hunter Drone, an unknown enemy, so something new. Elite Sectoid, uh, Elite Vanguard, Elite Striker. That actually looks like a relatively speaking easy mission. So let's do that, see how the team is doing. And then we're going to uh, go in with another team. We can always, uh, throughout the rest of the month, eh, sort of soonish, uh, we should try to get that other mission going. So take a look at our soldiers inappropriate murphy is not there should we maybe do the following and we're saving kind of the b team for the heavier mission right afterwards and we're now sending in the c team do we even have enough people for a c team so i can don't get too greedy my friend that is not a good idea so say if if we were to put a c team in we had a grenadier and a sharpshooter and a specialist and a ranger so that's at least a standard team but we would have a few more rookies grenadier training two days unfortunately not good enough we could of course take kind of a reaper with us um, just to scout it out very low chance that they would die so say reaper plus the four and they were taking a skirmisher with us, uh, so that would really be the C team. Then essentially what we would do is we wait the two more days until the Grenadier is uh, there and we take those four, the Majors, plus Endors, who is the bondmate of Zirkim, that's five, and then that one random, um, that one random Grenadier, Aviator, and put them on the mission. I think that's the play here, guys. I think we do have two teams and we can take a back-to-back -back mission, which is great because it increases the challenge. And specifically the first um, run now, we are lucky enough to have kind of an, a doable mission for, for a beginner's team. And by beginners, I mean sergeants and so on. So um, I'll prepare that. Wish me luck for it. And if you are hoping as much uh, as I do for more stability in the mod pack, then the only way to achieve that is to get rid of the voodoo that the uh, warlock has put upon the safe game. And I can tell you the like button is the natural enemy of voodoo. You gotta click it and with enough positive energy we will have a stable run. So help me out and see you in the next run. Take care guys. Bye bye.